Hallelujah. Finally, there's a report of the healings in the children in Jesus' use of Psalm 8. In Matthew 21, it reads, And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. And when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased and said unto him, Hearest thou what these say? And Jesus saith unto them, Yea, have you never read out of the mouths of babes and sufferings? Thou hast perfected praise. Oh, Jesus. By answering the prayers of the outcasts and making them fit for the sanctuary, Jesus put the temple back in its proper place. Yes, he made it beautiful once again. Yes. He cleansed it. Yes, he, did. he demonstrated that he was the divine Lord, the messenger of the covenant. And he indicated that he was the fulfillment of Psalm 8, the incarnate Son of Man who should raise human life to the level God intended and should receive praise. All of these events in the scriptures that they fulfilled declared again that Jesus was and is the promised Messiah. That's what church is all about. It's Christ's hospital. It's where those who are sick, those who are oppressed, those who are brokenhearted, the captive, the blind, and the bruised are supposed to come to be healed. Amen. And we are now his hands. We are now his feet. We are now the vessels filled with his spirit and power that must tell the lost that there is a savior. We must compel them to come. We must have doors that are open to receive those who are in need of a savior. You know, it's difficult when we're not used to hanging around the lost. It's difficult to see the tattoos. It's difficult to see this dressing that's immodest. It's difficult to hear the language. It's difficult to smell the stench of the homeless. But that, people of God, is our calling. That is what we're called to do as the body of Christ. It's time for us to prepare for our visitation. It's upon us. Pastor Kofi brought it forward. Many before him have brought it forth that God is going to visit Silver Spring in an incredible way. We don't want to miss our visitation because it doesn't look like or come in the package that we think it ought to come in. We don't want to miss our visitation because it doesn't look like the revivals of the past. God is doing a new thing and he will reveal it to his prophets and those of us who are willing to listen. I want us to be ready. I was so blessed on Friday to see Stephen and Jeannie and Nathan participating in the prayer and walking around these halls in this sanctuary, praising God and praying. Stephen prayed for me straight out of his heart. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And I want us to pray that we can encourage our young people to step up and take on what God is calling them to do. He felt led to pray. Nobody prompted him. Nobody said, go up to the front. Stephen said, I need some oil. I need to pray. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Nathan was praying, sitting here with his mom in front, lifting up all the young people in our church. Tears coming down his face. Pure worship. Pure prayers. How many know God heard those prayers? Yes. Pastor Kilby has said many times that the revival is going to come among our young people. So we need to pray. We need to be their cheerleaders. We need to encourage them. Amen.
in turn, God has not left the adults behind either. And we need to get ready. Yes. We need to get ready by worshiping with a pure heart. Oh, we need to get ready so that we're focused when we worship. Yes. We're not just singing songs, no. but we're focused. Yes. And we're worshiping with a heart that's pure. Yes. We need to get ready by ministering to God's needs first. Amen. 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 We don't need to come into the sanctuary empty. We need to come filled so that we can contribute to that powerful noise of worship and praise that's going on all over the body. We need to get ready by being rooted and grounded in the Word of God. You see, we don't know with all the laws going around, we don't know if the day's coming where we won't be able to meet like this. We don't know. So we got to hide this word in our hearts. Amen. In the day of trouble, we ought to be able to pull out the scripture and confess the word of God because that's the power. That's where our answers are. We need to take a small passage and meditate it and let it fill us up. We need to be filled with the Spirit. We need to ask God to pray and cause us to be refreshed and renewed. We need to come charged up and fired up and ready to be used. We need to get ready by quickly repenting. How many know we're not going to leave this earth without having sinned? Amen? We sin on a daily basis, both in thought, word, and deed. But the Bible tells us that we need to quickly repent. Amen. If we hold it, yes. the enemy has an opportunity to come in. And he is waiting and watching to take us out yes, on a technicality. Yes, he doesn't care. He doesn't care about how hurt you are mm -hmm. because of the sin that was done against you. He doesn't care about how justified you are in the way you feel. Yeah. He doesn't care, yeah. but you need to care because God wants you to quickly repent. Yes. It's time for us to consider what it costs Jesus yes. every day. Yes. This is the time of year when we consider the cross. Mm -hmm. So when we miss it, we need to quickly repent. Yes. As a church, we need to mature and grow up and stop focusing on minor things. Amen? Amen. We need to be stop being critical of one another. Yes. Pastor Kofi mentioned something that hadn't occurred to me, but he said there's competition in the church. We need to stop competing with one another. I'm here to tell you that God plants the people of God in the church as He will. We don't know why we're here. But God planted each and every one of us. Yes. And each and every one of us has a part to play. Yes. Yes. We have a part to play in the building of the kingdom of God. Yes. So we need to encourage one another. Yes. And we need to submit one to another. Yes. Amen. 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 We have several gifted ministers, gifted musicians. We can't compete with one another. We each bring a different gift. We each bring a different approach to this gospel. But it's all necessary. Because the ones I can reach, Sister Cindy can't reach. The ones Sister Cindy reach, Pastor McLeod can't reach. And so forth and so on. We need to lift up our pastor and Sister Rose on a daily basis. Great is the one thing. Amen. Great is the warfare. We need to stay connected. You see, the devil likes to isolate. Mm -hmm. He likes to fill you with lies yes. and self-doubt. Yes. Don't let him get in and talk to you. You have to tell him the way Jesus did. Get me yes. behind me, say He's trying to destroy you. Don't let him listen. Don't listen to what he has to say. That's why it's so important to meditate on the promises of God. 
it's so important for you to know that you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. It's important for you to know that he gives his angels charge over you, that you are the righteousness of God, that he's called you, he's equipped you, he's gifted you. Today I want to invite you to come. We've covered a lot of ground. 600 years of prophecy, 300 prophecies spanning over a thousand years were fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Yes. And today he's calling each and every one of us on the greatest journey oh. and to receive the greatest gift. We're all family here today, but I want to make sure that if there's anybody here that needs to give their heart to Jesus, now's the time. Your days are short, the time is short. An innocent man took the blame for our sin. You know this passage. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. He did not send his son into the world to condemn, but to save. We have a loving and a just God. He has a solution to our sin. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask Pastor McLeod to come and close us out. I hope this encourages you. I hope that you will hear me and get ready for the visitation of the Lord. Amen. I hope that you will pray and be all that God has called you to be. And watch how God changes us and changes our church. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you.